these are taking away your basic human rights and yeah. civil rights, and they're going to have severe consequences further down the line for the next generations. Yeah. So, like I said, if you really want your kids to be able to go and see live music, and music is a basic, you know, basic, <laughs> emotive, primitive yeah. um, way of expressing yourself yeah, yeah. And, and feeling emotions, that's going to be taken away. That's being destroyed right now as we speak. <laughs> Killer Killer Official .com. <laughs> THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton, and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Killer podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp, and street culture. THTC, eco fashion redefined since 1999. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. We're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, one, two, one, two, yeah. I wonder when the plan comes together. It's Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London. Share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Don't be strangers, you know you know who you are. Oh, big shout out to the regulars. Big shout out to Graffiti Kings inside the place as well. And yay, we have a legacy holder in the house and our good mate at that. He's always strong, always solid, always a good chat. Barry Ashworth, Doc Pistols. Mate? How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. It's good to be back in my um, uh, old hunting ground. <laughs> hunting ground. I love it. Yeah. That's right. So in an undisclosed location, we might add. Uh, yes, you you have had a, ha a few haunts here. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I lived. I used to have a place down in Albert Street um, when I first moved around here for. Uh, for about 10 years, and I was in Holsden for uh, another 10 years. So, yeah, very well versed. I've thrown many Lovely. pubs in, and many parties in all the uh, local boozers around here. We always do one uh, at the um, Mason's Arms during Carnival. Mm. Um, always do a party it's there. A good spot there as well. I mean, used to be so many people used to hang out here. I mean, the Stanton Warriors were here. Ed from the Chemical Brothers here. Justin Robinson was here. Freestylers were here, Matt and um, Aston. Um, it just seemed like everyone was around at the time. Yeah. It feels uh, there is a it, there, and of course there are there are the same reprobates that are around now. Bushwhacker, Richard yeah. Norris. Um, yeah. yeah, everyone was around. It just felt That's like crazy. it felt like the whole of certainly the whole of the break scene was sort of felt like it was here. Um, Touche from the Wise Guys was hanging around. Yeah, we just like, it was it was a big family at the time. That's so sick. Well, so you used to just go what, roam around different pubs and well, just, just to get in different pubs. Yeah, I mean, you'd sort of move, for, you know, pubs coming in and out of flavour, but the Paradise was always a good haunt. Um, uh, Cumber Chamberlain was a great one. Mm. Um, the one that used to be called the Crickets just down the road, that was a good place. There was loads of great yeah. boozers here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is very much the order of the day, this conversation that we were even just approaching. It just feels Do you remember so when apt. you used to be able to go to the pub? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Do you remember? You used to go to a bar and you used to, they pour you a drink out of a, a pump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, exactly that. I mean, I spent, you know, um, was it 362 days in a year? Something like that, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think I had two not two days in out of the whole three hundred and sixty. The rest was out. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those were the days, right? Yeah, man. It was right. twenty four hours a day. I mean, with this, we, you know, the cynicism is here. I mean, I think you know, in this day and age, right now, the way I say day and age, man, because you know, we're an evergreen show. But but the facts are that when we come out of this situation we were in two thousand and twenty, what's the date today? I mean, it's what November, October, October. Yeah, October. <laughs> Do you know what I mean the world is a lot different, and it's only going to get a lot more different? It's uh, it's a crazy time to be in the entertainment and. It's an absolutely. I mean, I. <clears throat> I think it's probably the, one of the worst times ever for our industry. And I don't just mean being an artist. I mean, for crews, for venues, for everybody. I mean, you know, the government really haven't done enough to support the industry. Mm. The festivals. I mean, I, I was over in... Um, I mean, it's just been a weird year. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's been a weird, weird Super year. Weird, and, huh? and, and obviously the pandemic's been um, front, left, right and centre for that. But, I mean, I was, I was over in Panama at Tribal Gathering in the middle of a jungle, surrounded by naked people on acid. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and then when's, the, when's the flight? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then the military turned up um, and said, right, we're stopping the, um, they turned off the music, so we're stopping the festival. Mm. Um, COVID, and I was like, oh, I mean, COVID was sort of happening, but it wasn't, didn't really expect it to take hold. That's mad. And the promoter turned around to me and said, like, don't worry about it. They're just here to, you know, get mm. there, whatever, and uh, with the music will be back on. 
and we'll be off again. This is a two-week festival. It goes on mm. two weeks. They're doing an indigenous um, part. And it goes on for a month, actually. <laughs> they do an indigenous thing for the pe- low people from all over the country, all different tribes come in and they have like, you know, so they wow. do, do that. It's amazing, absolutely incredible, stunning location. Mm. Um, so the promoter said this will continue and I kind of got an idea that something wasn't right. And I remember I, I literally went and I got a taxi from the middle of the jungle straight to the airport and got the last plane out. I and mean, like, fuck this. Yeah, I just, I just, I just, something didn't feel right to me and I was like, but never did I expect a year like this. Just a complete U-turn of everything we'd ever... <laughs> Built I, mean, and, I, yeah. I mean, again, I, you know, before Panama, I was in New Zealand at a great festival called Splore. So the year started perfectly. Yeah. And then I had so many shows because we had the new album coming out, um, you know, penciled for September. So yeah. I had a whole string of UK, European and festival tours lined up. Yeah, big and, up Serena, by the way. Big shout out to Serena, of course. Big up Serena. Yes. Um, uh, you know, and that was going to end in September when we put on our Mucky Weekender Festival. Yeah. And then as soon as I got back from Panama, and I was lucky because I got the last flight, and other people would literally just come home a month ago because they couldn't get out of the country. <gasps> so, yes, yeah, so I was just like, I did not want to, I didn't, you know. You want to be that guy. I didn't want to be that guy. So I literally, like I said, you know, and then got back and, you know, I think I've done two shows this year. I've got... One in about three weeks ago at the Norfolk um, racing ground mm. or show ground. Mm. Um, and that was incredible. I mean, it showed that you could actually put um, social distancing events on. The production was fantastic. Yeah. The social distancing was people who were all at tables. Yes, it was a bit strange in that, you know, the audience was further back. and But they didn't have to sit down. They were just out to be in their pods around the table when they could stand up well, and dance. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. believe me, you know, you didn't realise until you got on stage how much you really, really missed yeah, it. Oh, you know? yeah. So and I was like, well, and they've been doing this for two months. And I just thought, well, why hasn't every city, every town that's got a area just put up a stage? Because obviously the, the cost comes into when the production, mm. taking up and down stages and moving yeah. around. It's expensive. But if you just put it up there, set it up for two months, do three, four shows a week, and they can be, you know, different you know, different shows at different times in the day, then it can make it economically yeah. Yeah, viable. Do you know what right. I mean? Financially viable. I'm with you. I'm and, with you. All those little small, like, precincts and um, community spaces, Spaces the the gar the yes yeah, certainly and if you want and if you want to, or, or if you want to go bigger you know you like your Wandsworth Commons you know your your Hyde Parks your Clapham Common mm. Victoria Park there's loads of different places because of the size you need yeah. because of the social distancing thing do you know what I mean that but it wouldn't have made an effect you could have still made it financially viable and, and it was yeah. like why isn't this being played out yeah I would imagine like Dub Pistols would be a wicked candidate for like the the, 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 the battle of the band style, uh, middle of town centre, <laughs> get a party going. You know what I mean? Like, it's always a battle of the bands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like you could do like a mini tour of like yeah, smaller and towns. Again, and it shit, was really right? sad because just before it dropped down to six people a table, we just literally signed up that day. This was a couple of weeks ago, and trying to work out what we're going to do for the rest of the year and to tour the album. And we'd just done a deal with sort of the academy groups and the bigger venues to do a socially distanced tour, um, no, which okay. again was viable with yeah. eight people around the table. The minute they dropped it to six, it just became financially unviable and the tour was off again. So it's like oh, every time you try yeah. and do something, it just feels like someone's pulling the rug from underneath your uh, feet. Yeah, yeah. And you're constantly, you're fighting against that, the resistance of like them genuinely not giving too, too many shits. That's the other thing. No, I mean, we was talking about it um, before we went live and... Um, yeah, I mean, I think the government's handling this has been pretty sh- shonky, to say the least. Mm. Um, there are loads of groups, you know, the We Are Viable, We Make Events, Let The Music Play. Mm. There's there's lots of different groups that are um, making a song and dance about it, but it really does need, you know, um, a concerted effort and support from everybody out mm-hmm. there, you know, because otherwise there's not going to be any live music left. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's That's not right. just the musicians. It's like we were talking about the, you know, the actual venues, are, you know, they're, they're being shut down at an alarming rate because they can't open. Mm. Um, all, the, all the support crews, the crews, the techs, the engineers, yeah. the bar staff, the, like, you know, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. And, you know, if people don't come together soon, all these places are going to be gone forever. That's right. And it's our culture, you know, it's like what makes the UK great is yeah. our arts and events industry. That's right. You know, Was it oh, the fifth biggest economy? 
Yeah, it's a, it's a £6 billion pound industry and yeah. it's the fifth biggest contributor, contributor to the UK economy and it's just been like, you know, the, and now the government have turned around and said that we're not viable. Well, all these clubs and all these venues and all these festivals would all be full. All the, It's not just the theatres and the sports stadiums and everything. would all be full yeah, 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 yeah. if they were allowed to, pro, you know, go ahead. Now, obviously, there's a pandemic. No one's disputing that. But they are viable businesses under mm. any normal normal right. times. Do you well, know what I mean? And th there will be a time when hopefully when things return to normal. But if these industries, if these places aren't supported now, then mm. they're not going to be there. Yeah. Well, there's you professional know. people that have been schooled and have grafted for their, you know, their stripes. They know they they, they have work experience. They've got this. This is their industry. It's hard to it's hard to quantify, isn't it? Because you don't have it. You don't get a certificate at the end of the journey. But it is a job that you have to build set skills for. <sighs> You know, it, it is a massive, massive industry. And like I said, when when, it, when the government wanted to um, showcase the best of Britain, mm. um, like the opening ceremony of the Olympics, Olympics they yeah. turned to the arts That's and right. events industry, exactly. and which was a fantastic, you know, spectacle yeah. to showcase to the world. Amazing. You know, and... <laughs> That's every, you know, and again, when the world wanted feeding, like Live Aid and that, it was all, so many people stepped forward yeah. and stepped up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and for free. free. Do you know what I mean? And always when there's a disaster or there's something, the events industry would be the first there. And all the crews are doing it for nothing. Everybody's doing it for nothing. But now, right at this moment in time, those people need um, supporting. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And the government isn't supporting them. That's a really, really good point. And, uh, yeah, I, mean, I think it just mirrors everyone's feelings on this show, that's for sure. Um, the, the other th comment we were talking about beforehand is, I, I also feel at the same time, and I tread carefully when saying it, I do feel there has been a, a small level of complacency with the lineups of festivals over the years as it's kind of wounded in. I mean, you, you're a great example of somebody that's resourceful and... Oh, fuck it. If, if I ain't being taken seriously in this festival, I'll make my own festival. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> you, you've been, always been instrumental in those kind of causes. So, so you know, they have, there has been a lot of it's the same names on the same billings all the time. And, yeah, there is a hierarchy that's included in that, right? I guess well, I think that's down to agents and promoters, really, that need to sort that one out. I think the thing here is that, you know, regardless of who's on the bill, and, and I get your point absolutely, um, is that all these businesses are being deemed unviable and they would normally sell out. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. and, and it's not, like I said, it's not just the uh, artists. It's the, it's all the crews, all, all, all the production staff, everybody who'd work at those festivals. Mm -hmm. And don't I don't understand quite what's going on. Mm -hmm. I do not understand what's going on. But complacency in bookings, there's loads of different kinds of festivals. You've got your mainstream festivals yeah. that will always book the same artist, do you know what I mean, and um, et cetera. And then you've got like your bearded theories, your boomtowns to say perhaps, mm -hmm. your beat herders, which do step out. Mm. But they're the ones that have like, and like my, like, say like my festival, Shindig as well, yeah. um, only 5% of the people, are people asked if, ask for a refund, most people rolled over. And it's the same for all those festivals because most festivals shouldn't be about the lineup per se. Mm. Do you know it's what experience. I mean? It's, a, it's the event. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like you know that you're going to go to beat early, you're going to have a quality time. You know if you're going to go to Mucky Weekend, you're going to have a great time. Boomtown, regardless of who's on the bill. Mm. So they have hardcore followings, Bearded Fury, Beautiful Days. They will have a hardcore following that regardless yeah. of who's playing, and people like are going to go. Because I like the, the fact that they're a different kind of um, audience. They're not your corporate ones. Exactly. They're not your corporate ones. You know, places like Beat Erder and... Um, others won't take any sponsorship. They just don't want it involved. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like they want to keep it independent. Yeah. And that's what an independent festival is. I mean, you see these awards and it's like, that's not an independent festival. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. It's part of a group. Mm, cheeky, isn't it? Cheeky. Yeah. Like you say, I think that I think the, the world is about to be in the grip of something and the whole industry is going to change whether we like it or not. It has changed. It's changed already. Yeah. It's changed. You know, it's, I mean... And, but it's also not just about that. It's about people can't go out. It's about their mental health. Yeah, that's the effect right. This oh is having God. on, you know, loads of my artist friends that I'm speaking to. I know they're struggling mental. They're performers. They yeah. like to perform. Yeah. And other people, I think anybody who's in, um, 
you know, who's been in isolation or, you know, during lockdown, is, you're, you're going to struggle. There's no, going to be times think... when your mind wanders. Yeah. I know mine has. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... You've got a studio in your house. You're not being as creative as you, as you would be impulsively and with was your it... band and, you know... And there's only so much you can write. So, I mean, I'm, I've yeah. been lucky enough that I've actually... Most of my attention during lockdown has been in doing charity work. You know, whether it's, whether it's raising money for tonic music for mental health, which I'm patron of, and uh, got the Flying Circus this week for that. Um, or, or I've been, you know, been raising money for the Black Rhinos, the last sort of, you know, um, population of live, you know, Black Rhinos in the Give earth. me some of that. That's you fucking so that's sick. That's all I've been doing is just doing... I mean, but it's helped me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. helping other people is it makes you feel good about yourself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's kind of been my focus, mm -hmm. you know. And because I'm I'm not a trained, you know, mental health person, but I, but you know I can help fund the people that are to yeah, make yeah. sure that people do get and get the help they need. And it's you know, like I said, it's just it's the thing that saved me. Here's my here's my theory. Yeah. Because there ain't many of you about, <laughs> right? That there's very few characters that. You know, come into a, a world like you really walk it how you talk it, and it's funny because you've got the persona that pulls that through. So when it comes to like a charity job, yeah, it's almost like yeah, cool Barry. It's like I feel like you you're one of the few people that as a personality there. You know, you're you're a pundit in your own right as well as a musical artist. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I uh, thank you very much. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, it's a lovely thing for you to say. I think you just know for well, you've been in this industry and we've been around long enough to see people who have suffered from mental health issues yeah. or who struggle, you know, the, the lifestyle, the ups, the downs, the ins, the outs, the late nights, the travelling, mm. um, the critique, do you know what I mean, which can be good or bad, do you know what I mean, and yeah. self-critique as well. So, you know, apart from going up and down myself, I've seen, you know, people really struggle with mental mm. health issues and mm. I've seen, you know, another person that we've got involved in the, in the Flying Circus, sorry to go on about it. No, no, but, um, Your podcast, I've, brother. Your yeah. podcast, go ahead. Where I've moved out to the countryside, um, my, my wife is really into her horses, so... Um, her horse died recently and I got her in, I spoke to some people at the local racing yard, mm. Claire Hobson Racing, and um, she's in there working. But part of, part of that process was meeting the guys and we'd become friends and we was going down the pub and we was talking about, you know, what I was doing with, with Tonic Music for Mental Health and mm. the Wing Walk. And they said that they would like to get involved because one of, one of the jockeys there has lost, had lost three friends this week uh, not this week, this year, to suicide. And apparently it's a massive problem in the racing industry. One, because of the... It's the same thing, the highs, the lows, the jockeys have to keep their weight down. Do you know oh what I mean? God, it's like yeah, all sorts imagine. of things. So there's a massive mental health problem in that industry as well. And we sort of saw there was so much in common. So they've joined us and they've been absolutely smashing wow. it out of the park with their fundraising. And, and it's just, it just opens... This just opens it all up. And I honestly yeah. believe there's a tsunami of problems coming from this. Does it... Does Do you think... In, in terms of, I th I feel it anyway with, with Barry Ashworth, Dub Pistols, and everything. You sometimes um, to take your eye off the attention of of being in a band and being a a, pro a product, and putting it into another, uh, putting your attention into another thing. Uh, it, it kind of helps the, the product. Oh, for sure. Because you're just not able to, you don't put too much emphasis, you don't stress about it. It's like, well, this is a more important project to be focusing on. For yeah, now. it just helps clear your mind, especially yeah. in a time like this where, you know, you have got nothing, you know, being a musician. And we normally travel and tour 11 months of the year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, performing live is a massive part of my life. It always has been for the last 30 years. Five years. You Big know. shout out to Dave Budgeon, Jimmy T, all the crew. Big shout out, of course. There you go. Um, yeah, so it's been a massive part of my life, and that's all I've ever done. I spent my whole life on the road. I don't think I've ever spent so long in one place yeah. ever. And like I said, you let that mind wander, and it will wander. Yeah. You know. So giving myself something to focus on. Yeah. Outside of music, I've continued to write music. You know. I've had King Youth round and we've been writing together and that. But there's only so much writing I can about. do. Do you know what I mean? It's like so, I go out for a walk, a couple of hours a day, mm. but the winter's coming and that's terrifying me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, because <laughs> you should be on tour right now. This well, is... I'm on tour till Christmas and then I normally go away for, for uh, a couple of months and tour the other side of the world where it's nice and sunny yeah, and hot. Yeah, yeah. I have been privy 
to, to the de- debauchery of, of a dub pistol <laughs> I mean, I know I'm one of the lucky ones on backstage gallivanting and whatnot, but oh my God. I mean, you're a, you're, you're a tour de force. It's just like, I don't know how you, you know, you've always got a drink in your hand, you've always got a grin, you jump on stage, you get sweaty, you come off, you carry on. <laughs> it's <just> amazing. But <laughs> well, that's part, I mean, it just, it, it, it was the norm, you know, it was kind of like, that's what... Um, we lived it to the maximum. We always thought that that was what rock and roll was, and um, we, it took a long time for us to sort of get our act together, really, and grow up. <laughs> it's funny how all of a sudden you, you forget that a lot of these rock and rollers that we're trying to emulate are all, you know, senile or dead. <laughs> Thanks like a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. No, I mean... It, Part and parcel of the life lifestyle, you know. Mm. I mean, like, but like I said, there therein comes the problems with mental health as well, because okay. obviously, like you know, drink drugs, late nights, performing, mm. up and downs. You know, you you, you know, you're not going to avoid mm. getting some sort of uppers and downers. You're going to yeah, get your head sooner like later. Especially when you go out and do live shows, like like you say, eight months in a year, ten more, yeah. uh, like like a level of PTSD kick, you know, because you're literally doing it every day. It's like being out in the trenches to a d- <laughs> an entertainment sense, you know. It's, well, people it's a think lot. it's a, you know, people think it's a glamorous lifestyle, and for an hour and a half a day, you know, mm, while you're is, up on yeah. stage, it's showtime. That's fantastic. What people don't see is the, like I say, the early starts. You know, you don't. You're up all night. You and then you're off early in the morning, yeah, yeah. and then you'll be hanging around venues all day, sound checking, and you'll just be drinking, and and that yeah. just becomes the norm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You'll be eating badly because you'll be eating in in in, in um, you know service stations and things like that, and yeah. you, you just pick up really bad habits really bad quickly. Habits. That's right. Ginsters, fuck off. <laughs> just no more Ginsters. Greg's. Yeah, yeah. Greg's. <laughs> Those weird flapjack yeah. takeaway. Biscuit things, yeah, yeah, all this stuff. Um, in, in its right time, though, you know, with, with every, you know, that's just that's the that's the better side, <laughs> the bestest side, though, is you have this ecosystem that on a on a good on a good season, like you say, you go you go out, you do your gigs, you do your touring, you come back to a nice tranquil. You're outside now. You're outside in, uh, in the Yeah. Um, how is that for you? How uh, in a normal you know year? How has that been? You know, the, well, it's, it's been my again solitude has been the fact that you know I spent most of my time um, living in West London. I absolutely love my time here. Got loads of amazing friends that I do miss, obviously. Um, but you know, living out in the countryside certainly d- during the pandemic has been a lifesaver. It mm. means I can go out walking, and there's just you know, there's just animals everywhere yeah. and beautiful countryside, and it's been a real you know, it really helps clear my mind. When you say miss your friends, though, I mean, we I know what you mean. There's a community hub which there, you, yeah, there was for around yeah. here for quite a long yeah. time. But that I mean, doesn't my, last, does it? It doesn't. You have to. There has to be a breaking point, right? Yeah. I mean, well, I guess again, most of the time I was on the road, so. When I say I wasn't just hanging out around here, most of the time I was, I was on tour, and then mm. I'd come back and I'd see my friends. So that was like being on tour. Yeah, that's right. You know just continuation. Because, I mean? because, because, but now when I finish touring <laughs> yeah. and the partying stops, I go home and my wife's there, um, and the countryside's there, and I can shut the door and 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 turn off. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I can relax. Um, whereas before, I would just hit when I was here. It was just do comes trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can imagine, isn't it? <laughs> Not your normal episode Look, of Cheers. No. No, say the least. Definitely as a bit East Enders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In the West. West hey. Enders. But you do get West Enders, <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, you are an inspiration in my mind when I think about like what, what you've achieved as a brand. Um I don't imagine you going home and having a quiet red wine by the fire. It sounds to me like you've got like a you know, there's the merchandise, there's the drinks, there's the you know, there's, there's all sorts of things that are, are essentially built for festival upkeep well it's 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 not just a festival upkeep i mean the merch has obviously been a, a big saver mm-hmm. and thank you to everyone that's continued to support us through Amazing. this but yeah. um obviously you know merch is a map you know selling music is one of the hardest things now making yeah. money from from selling music is yeah. very so merch um and touring that becomes a massive part of your of your income mm-hmm. you know so um you know, you and you. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people who are always working. Whether or not it's just, you know, whether I'm at home, I'm never going to be switching off. I'm always hustling somewhere. Mm. Or the other, do you know what I mean? Because let's face it, this industry is a hustle. You've mm. got to be on the, yeah. you know, twenty four seven. That's why I kind of bring it up because I'd like to chat about it a little bit more, just for people out there. Because you know, we're talking about the worst sides of what's going on, but there is an upside. The idea of like diversifying as an artist. Yeah. Okay. 
music will never depreciate, but there isn't uh, there isn't the money right now. Well, that's kind of depreciation, isn't it? I mean, it not not people are still listening to music, and that's I, what don't, I, mean. I don't it, honestly it, believe that people would mind paying for. Um, music, I agree. but the way that it's done now, i.e., Spotify, is, is, is scandalous. Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, and that's why Bandcamp is coming up more and more, and mm. more artists are choosing to put their music up on there. That's right, because then it's the direct sale, and you they know. don't want to deal with Spotify. And yeah, you don't want to deal with you know. <laughs> You have to deal with Spotify, but you're not going to be earning much money. I mean, and the playlists are, are ridiculous, trying to get on the playlist there. I don't know how many people actually work them, but I don't think it's many. Um, that shit Conventional me. radio's changing. Yeah. Um, the whole industry's changing. So merchandise and, and having to look at other revenue streams are essential. Yeah. Um, when I say depreciation, I, I mean, like, I would still listen to, a, you know, I could still listen to a classic Dub Pistols to right. now right um the fact that that as a as an experience as you know as, and and nostalgic it leans towards okay well, so what the pistols do now and it's i just find it it wicked that there is so much brand content that's involved yeah and you're still like you're creating this um this em this environment for the music to become its soundtrack do you know yeah I mean? absolutely Absolutely, but like I said, a lot of that was is, is built around our touring schedule and it's just not there. So while you're not there, apart from doing the streams, like I said, for charity and things like that, then you just that's what you're doing. You, 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 you're thinking up new ideas, you're trying to get different products in, mm. you're trying to do different things, you're trying to look at... Constantly as well at the moment, obviously rescheduling everything is a mm. massive part of your diary. Yeah, yeah. It's just like move the goalposts. Like, yeah, yeah, it's right. like, oh, well, that tour's now moved to that tour. That, I just, I don't even want to talk to my agent anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> yeah it's like, <laughs> you've got a gig, have I? No. Me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, honestly, that you know, I, I, I'd be lying if I said that uh, it was intentional, but there was a natural organic progression with me and my career where I just felt like, well, beatboxing wise, the gauntlet has to be passed. I can't be doing this thing, think, you know, and, and using the model of the best in the world for that, you know, what, for 11, 12 years? I don't think so. It felt like Congratulations. natural. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just Still got it. Yeah, it was never going to happen, right? So, you know, and things move on. The industry moves on. And uh, yeah, I just was like, you know what? If I'm not getting the gigs, then something has to change. Something has to move and, and I, I have to create my own thing. Make a new vehicle yeah, for yourself. Yeah, you make a new vehicle. And that's what I see you do all the time. To recreate yourself in that way each time with a new product, with a new thing, with a new festival. Like, your branding is so on point. Like you, Thanks, Johnny A. Johnny A, I'll Johnny A. Johnny A. Yeah. Who's Johnny A? Johnny A. Yeah, he, he used to live around here as well, but he's uh, he's the guy who does all our um, artwork and art designs. And uh, I mean, there's been a few people over the year, but Johnny A is the man that nails it right at this very moment in time. He looks good. He, 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 I don't looks, know. No, why. He, he, he's absolutely top of his game. I shouldn't give out his uh, promo details really, because otherwise I'll end up um, losing him for my work. Yeah. Oh, that retain it down, case. Johnny A. <laughs> 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 but, but seriously though, like you know, Dub Pistols to me it embodies that lawlessness. It's that kind of Mexican West. Punk kind rock, of, yeah, exactly. Punk rock, it's yeah. like it's do it yourself, ethos. Yeah, do you yeah, know totally. what I mean? It's like you know, I mean, for years I couldn't. Um, early parts of my career had had management, and then the industry changed so much there was no twenty percent to be had. It was only twenty yeah. percent of the blame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Do you> know <laughs> what I, mean? oh, yeah. Yeah. So I know exactly like, what you so mean. So it's like, well. <laughs> There's no point. So for years and years and years, I managed myself, you know, because I, I couldn't see the benefit um, that there used to be by having a manager. I'd kind of been around the industry. I'd been up, down, thrown out of it. Mm. Um, how, much that, how much does that take? Because, yes, I agree. You're, you're your best representative. Um, how, much, how much energy does that take? A lot. Must take a lot. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, but the problem is, even when you're not managing, i.e., you've got a manager, and I've got a manager again now. But even when you're not managing, you still kind of managing because you still have to discuss everything with your manager anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. it was just, it was just, it just worked for me for quite a long period of time. I, you know, I've had some fantastic managers, Richard Bishop, and in America, who was absolutely incredible. Mm. And then afterwards, I, I just got to the point where there was no, there, there was a point in my career where I just, it, it didn't benefit me to mm. have a manager. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It was if you're bringing twenty percent to the table, that's fine. But mm. like I said, all was left was twenty percent of the blame. That's a that's a, it's a classic. <laughs> it's a classic chicken and egg, isn't it? Of of what a manager uh, is worth is, and if you find the right one that plugs in, a his good manager's yours, worth his weight in gold. But like right. I said that's that's a different thing, you know. Mm. But I went for a period where it just didn't fit me. Yeah.
And I think I was unmanageable, I think someone said as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that might have been the truth. But that does come with responsibility, right? I think we all, you know, when you get your back against the wall and you're like, okay, well, well, there's no manager out there, fine, I will do it myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, you have no choice. Yeah, yeah. All do you know what I mean? It just, I just, yeah, it was, just, it was just hard work and I think I was hard work for them. So, um, you know, so don't matter what time I go to bed, I'm up at, God knows when, I'm, and I'm, I'm on it. I did notice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I you know, notice. I'm always up bright and early, and it's like... <laughs> Give me a day in the life of uh, Barry Ashworth. Uh, get up at 7.30, nice 7, time. Um, yeah. get on the hustle until yeah. like I get out of bed. Yeah. You know, it's just, that's, that's it. You know, everybody be in the studio, whether it's on the phone, whether it's on the road, it's just like, you know, anyone on the road, you're still, you're still hustling. You're yeah. always hustling. Do you feel... Do you feel Something's missing in the day if you ain't doing something. Yeah, I, I think I'm a bit of a workaholic, and I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I just, I, I can't not do anything. Do mm. you know what I mean? I mm. think I would go crazy, and I just got to be doing something, otherwise, yeah. my mind drifts, and I just naturally do. Mm. You know, and in a time like this, where yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, wandering minds, and you know, yeah, you you must feel pretty, uh, pretty. Uh, Lucky that you, that you kind of sat out your stool in a way that at one time or another it was probably too much for you to swallow because it was so much going on. You'd be on the road yeah, and then you'd yeah. have an order for like thirty t-shirts at some <laughs> bloody place, and then you do you know what I mean? Um, now I guess your stool set up and you 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 I guess you, you it's a it's a bit of luck there, isn't there? Uh, I mean, I think you create your own luck. Um, you know you've. You just got to put the work in. Do you know what I mean? It's as simple as that. And whether or not, whether it's like now, and we're in a when we're in a strange time, you still got to keep your head up, which is the hardest thing I think mm. um, in times like this. You've got to stay productive. You've got to stay positive and focused. Do you mm. know what I mean? Because it's very easy to suddenly slip off that motivation thing where you you know to 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 to, to kick back and think well there's no point doing anything mm -hmm. you do that it's like a boxer who's taking a punch and he's on the on the deck and if, you know once you're out you're out yeah, do you know yeah, what i mean yeah, it's yeah. like but if you keep getting up and keep fighting yeah then you're still in with a you know hitter's chance too right, you know too right. Um, i'm coming to this question um because you you did make the departure you moved out of, out of the city um the, the hustle element to to, uh, to any artist, you know, there's some people that work hard, but then there's working clever and d d defining what your hustle is, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. But I, I think the way that I learned to do that was by making every mistake in the book. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I had to learn the hard way. It wasn't mm. like, you know, I mean, I call us successfully unsuccessful. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, and no one has, has tried to ruin their career as much as I have. Do you know what mm. I mean? It's like, <laughs> Sabotage, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. There, yeah. there was. Do you know what I mean? We were a liability. My company's called What the Fuck Could Possibly Go Wrong Limited, everything. Do you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> I love I do, it. <laughs> documentaries, what could, what could fucking possibly go wrong, yeah. the history of the dub pistols. It's like everything. Trust me. I don't sit here like going like I got all the answers or I never made a mistake. I made them all. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but I'll yeah. keep but I'll keep trying to look for the answers. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I won't take no for an answer. See, you just said that about the documentaries and shit. Like your marketing of the band is so on point, isn't it? Well, uh, you feed the fans. You, yeah. you really give them. <laughs> we just do just do our thing, though. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just like we just continually do our thing, and I think. The thing with Dub Pistols as well is we have a really good connection to to our fan base. They're more like our mates than our mm. than the. I mean, I don't don't like the word fans. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it kind of makes me feel because yeah. um, I'm not that special. Do you know what I mean? But we have a real good loyal fan base, if you want to call it that. That you know, we'll go out front after every show and meet mm. them. We'll have a drink with everybody. Do you mm. know what I mean? It's like we're not unreachable. Do you know what I mean? And and I think people really sort of respect that and. Mm. Um, Feel with you know they know we're approachable and I kind of think that that's where the loyalty comes from for sure. Do you know what I mean? I think your your audience in, in the same way as your music it embodies so many influences of British culture. Like you've got the, you know you've got the electronics, you've got the amens and drum and bass, but then you've got the full pub band esque style <laughs> ska music, yeah. reggae DJ at the start for good measure. It's like and then you, the way that you, it's, there's a, there's a fun loving criminals element to it as well that kicks in. 
and I think that's in part the persona of the band, but you've got the songs that, the legacy of songs and the, yeah. the fans that get it. It's the whole thing. I guess we're kind of almost like a 21st century specials. Yes, or a 21st exactly. century clash. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you know, we've, we've incorporated sort of electronic and um, club element into what is fundamentally sort of ska reggae hip hop yeah. and then we'll just move into drum and bass yeah. and you know we'll just switch it up but to me that's the punk punk ethos yeah, that yeah, we yeah. started off with which is like you know anything goes mm. try and i think we've been going long enough now this is we've got our eighth studio album out on the 16th of october mm-hmm. addict and it's we've been around long enough to know that you can't pigeonhole us. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like if you try and put us in a pigeonhole, and I've always fought against that, whereas the old punk ethos was, you, you know, it's anything goes. Mm. To me, if you ever tried to be punk, you weren't punk, you're, because yeah, if you're copying right. something, you ain't doing it. That's the problem. Do you know what I mean? So we, we can move around mm. different genres now, and people yeah. understand that. Yeah. Whereas when, when, when you're first starting out, everyone wants to put you in a pigeonhole, and if you have one track successful, you've got to make... All the rest of the tracks got to sound exactly, exactly like that. Exactly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, but we're lucky enough to uh, have, have managed to navigate around that way it's, by just continually doing what we're doing. Not always, not always successfully. No, I mean, it's it's all impressive. Like you say, uh, prepare to make mistakes. That's the way it is. You know, yeah. you, you fail, you fail without them. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. There, there is that. And I guess being in the studio must be pretty interesting for for you guys. What's what you know? No holds barred. You know these are the, these are the parameters. Yeah, I just you know it's just it just whatever we make, whatever we want to make on the day. Mm. You know, and bring. I'm lucky enough to work with various different vocalists. Um, Tim and Dave are fantastic musicians. I work with different producers. You know, whether it's King Youth, whether it's Billy Burris, Zero B, or Will Hensel or Jason O'Brien, wow, wow, they'll wow, always yeah. bring in different things. Do you know right, what I mean? Right. So, we're quite lucky that we're not just one. I'm not one dimensional yeah. in our sound. Do you have a studio in your house? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's see, that is a that is a mind chiller. You know, imagine some of the artists saying, "Got the studios in their houses right now." That's no, so... but I think technology is such it's that there. you can do it on. Yeah. You know, you can make up, you know, a, a decent production just on a laptop these mm, days. So mm. you can get the basics of writing a good song together yeah, yeah. quite easy. So do you get sent the, the project ideas and then you bounce them to Dave and you bounce them back to the producer? No, and... I'll quite often um, come up with an idea, um, get, a, get a producer, whether it's, let's like, say, you for Billy or whoever. We'll, can, we'll knock up a sort of basic idea and then we'll send it off to Dave or Tim because they're up in Leeds now mm, mm. and Tim will add some horns or whatever and just, you know, it's sort of, they'll send it back and quite often I was, you know, every poet's a thief or, you know, it's something that I've heard somewhere along the line, mm, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, um, and then we'll just start building it and then I'll bring in guest vocals or whoever and send, or send it off to them and then we'll get them in and record the songs. Yeah, that's the other thing. A big shout out to uh, Doghouse Dere- uh, Derelicts, right? Yeah, Dave and Tim. Yeah, man, all day. Um, Wow. I, I have to say, like, you, you're really calculative about your guests and it feels like, it feels like an event. Each album does feel like an event. Do you yeah, know? I mean, I'm, I'm eight albums. Oh, God knows how many guests we work with, but I'm, I'm quite lucky <laughs> that, we, you know, we tick most of the boxes that I want to tick. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So from that boy, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, honoured um, to have had that. Eight Charles. albums, eight yeah. fucking albums. Eight That's albums, crazy. Yeah, eight. Uh, <laughs> when we leave this beautiful earth, you, you're, you're, you, you've stamped your, you've stamped your mark on. Let's on... hope there is a beautiful earth left yeah. by the time we yeah. leave, because <laughs> Attenborough's are back to about to come back and tell us it's not looking good. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know I'm mate? actually pretty scared myself. I mean, what you know, you know, it, COVID's it, taken the whole whole. Um, a global warming thing away from the uh, agenda. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And oh, it's, it's like, but yeah. there's those Amazon rainforests and that ice cap still melting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you right. know, so once we get through this and Brexit, mm. we got. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like a little real mirror being put on ourselves right now. Oh and... man, I tell you, the, you know. I'm kind of feeling it. Emergency on planet Earth. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the chaos. I think anybody that enters into chaos has a, has a serious underlying problem. But but to, to have the mirror facing us and yeah. actually taking a look at ourselves and the way that we are... I think we acting. have no choice, no choice at the moment. I mean, you know, the world is so divided. Mm. Um, I find, you know, the internet now, you see more and more people leaving Facebook. You see more, because, again, mm. because of the pandemic. 
But for every, as we, as we spoke before, for every protest, there's a counter-protest. For every, for every statement, there's another statement which nullifies, nullifies it. It's mm. like you don't know what to believe. Not to believe. You can't stick your head above the parapet without being trolled yeah. or, yeah. do you know what I mean? You know, the council culture and, yeah. you know, I believe artists and things that, you know, there's a lot of people who haven't spoken up during this yeah. pandemic, like I said, about the venues and about everybody that's losing their jobs. And I think half the reason that these people aren't speaking out is they're too scared to they're speak scared. out because they're going to get their head knocked off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like their managers are telling them to stay out of it yeah, because right. you can't say right for doing wrong. And you're you're very much the opposite. If only there was like <laughs> other big acts that were, were turning around, vocalising exactly what's going on and what, how they feel. Because you need... You need you need a bunch of figureheads. Coming no, no, together. absolutely. That's what I think. That's what we are viable are looking for, and that we make events. They need someone, mm -hmm. you know, bigger than myself to, to come forward and, and and help the movement and hence help the industry as yeah. a whole. You that's know, right. so um, yeah. No, I mean, do when you say I'm I'm not, I'm I'm not scared of sticking my head above the parapet. I, no, I don't. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Look, I'm not saying that I don't, but I'm not arrogant enough to think that I'm right about everything either. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I listen to other people's point of view, but yeah. um, do I care if, if someone doesn't agree with me? I, not really. If I think they're wrong, if they're right, then I'll listen to them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Or, or if I'm proved wrong, I, I'll gladly listen. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. But someone trolling me, really, get off your keyboard, warrior. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, it's like, trolls, oh, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, this is the world we've come to now, you know? It's like... It's insane. <laughs> well, everyone's got a platform now, and rightly so. Everyone should have a platform, but oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. You know? But when it comes to the ballot box, no one goes and... Yeah, that's the, I think that's the sad thing, isn't it? Yeah. You know, everyone yeah. speaks up, um, but no one really, like you said, and then you put the ballot box in, you end up with that buffoon Boris. We are events as well. That's, that's, that, that needs to cultivate. You yeah, know, because, no, it needs to because be. Because he ain't, because Boris and all them lot, they ain't give a fucking shit. They <sighs> needs to be, this, this needs to cultivate and build. It's terrifying, like we said. We've, we mentioned it, touched on it a few times in this show. and Yeah, and it's not... Like I said, we need some, we need some bigger bigger artists to come out and support it, support the industry. Mm. Um, but we also need everyone else from the public to sign the petitions that are going around. I don't know if you've any of you have seen them. There's quite a few petitions going around. That's right. Because if not, it's not just you know, it's not just our lifetime. Your kids are going to have no events yes. to go to. Yes. Their their lib civil liberties are being taken away. Their civil rights, civil liberties. Yep. Yep. I don't know what you call it. Um, but the, you know they're, they're they're changing laws by the minute yes. without even consulta without consultation at all. That's you know, right. and and then these are these are taking away your basic human rights yeah. and civil rights, and they're going to have severe consequences further down the line for the next generations. Yeah. So. Like I said, if you really want your kids to be able to go and see live music, and music is a basic, you know, basic, <laughs> emotive, primitive yeah. um, way of expressing yourself yeah, yeah. And, and feeling emotions, that's going to be taken away. That's being destroyed right now as we speak. That's right. And take. So please, 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 people, step forward, stand up, and make your voices heard. Absolutely. fucking lutely There you go. Um, it's a dangerous weapon, is music. It's a dangerous fucking weapon, and but they it know is it. It's the most basic of, 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 like I said, pr you know, primitive ex ways of expressing yourself. Yeah. And whether it's through joy, yeah. or whether it's through mourning, mm. do you know what I mean? Or whether it's through protest, or just or love. Yeah, you know, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a you know, it's the best way of communicating. It's fantastic. It's the, it makes you can just all the emotions that you go yeah. through. Listening to music, listening and, to what's listening track. to yeah, and watching it. I mean, you know, let's not take away the fact that you take someone's attention in a live environment. You take someone away for two or three minutes on a song, yeah. and they're gone. You yeah. have they're undivided. They're not thinking about anything else. Like that's a that's a very powerful, powerful thing. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, we can't let that go. We got no. We need to fight for our right to party. <laughs> That's right. literally, <laughs> literally, the time is now, people. Stand up, be counted. So the new album, new album, Addict, eighth studio album. Six. It's here. It's here. It will be here. It's here. Yeah. It's so. it's uh, you can pre-order it. You can go to our website, thepistolsmusic.co.uk. Features Cheshire Cat, Ragged Twins. <laughs> Horseman, Natty Campbell, Shawnee T, Lindy Layton, Navigator. Ooh, I mean, there's Navi. a yeah, Navi, mm, good old Navi. Cold tight, Navi. Um, uh, he's killed it on this uh, Dark Days, Dark Times song we've done. Wow. Um, yeah, that's out on the 16th of October, Sunday Best. 
pre-order it now and help us smash the charts for it. Come on, baby. <laughs> and again, like listening to the lineup on this, it just feels like you, it's like a it's like a. Uh, it's its own world. This is dub. This is the dub pistols family. Uh, yeah, really? I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a. If you look over the eight course of eight years, the Pistolero family is large. <laughs> it's large, right? It's large. It's a, it's a, there's been a you know a few look at the amount of people in the different lineups and the amount of different guests. I mean, it's great when you can get the guests to come and join you because that obviously makes every show mm-hmm. different. Do you know what I mean? When you can have different guests coming in for different different mm. shows and it's 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 always 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 evolving. Yeah. It's a beautiful no, thing. It is a beautiful yeah. thing. <laughs> well, very best of luck, my brother. It's been absolutely awesome having you in. Oh, mate, it's been a pleasure to come back and see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last London. one, yeah, last one was the live one we did, wasn't it? <laughs> Hopefully the next one we'll do will be live again. Yeah. And I we'll be able so. to see some more people when we'll be out and we'll be out talking about the laugh life life we just had and the laugh we just had at the last festival we played. <sighs> we'll be back mate. to doing what we do. I'm telling you, man. Roll on ASAP. Barry, your star, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, brother. brother. Killer Keller podcast out like him was our fashion. You stay lucky, all right? Don't forget to share. We're gone. Peace.